Riddick, Dark Fury, a hidden animated gem that deserves a full movie. Peter Chung is one of the most divisive animators of his generation. While most filmmakers strive to connect with their audience, Chung's abstract plots and philosophical dialogue tend to repel viewers. Fans consider his matriculated segment from last year's Animatrix to be either the best or more commonly the worst of the anthology. Chung's work examines reality and human nature like a sterile experiment, rather than taking his stories at face value. Although his works are filled with action, the plot between those moments of action is rich and complex. <laughs> Chung's writing and composition style has likely kept him from becoming a more well-known animation director. So it's and bad that one of his most well-known works to date, The Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury, is a safe animation for the masses. Chung's animation, however, is still quite enjoyable, especially for people who are fans of the Riddick franchise. The film Dark Fury picks up immediately after the end of the first film, with the remaining crew floating through space, written by Brett Matthews from a plot by Pitch Black director David Tui. Riddick and his companions are intercepted by a ship full of mercenaries and must survive a series of video game-like challenges at the whim of a trophy collector who looks like she stepped straight out of Aeon Flux. Here, the writing is a bit of a mixed bag. The story works exceptionally well. It would be all too easy to overwrite this film and try to cram a two-hour plot into a 35-minute feature. Instead, the creators wisely focused on one specific series of events that develops the characters a little, features about four nice action sequences, and not only stands well on its own, but also serves as a good bridge between the two theatrical films. In the extras, Dewey says that with the Pitch Black series, he's essentially transitioning from sci-fi horror to sci-fi adventure, and this short sequence helps to bridge that gap. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is the timeline of this movie? One of the biggest questions is, where does this movie fit in with the rest of the Riddick movies? But don't worry, we have the full explanation for you here. It all starts with the movie, Pitch Black. Pitch Black was the first film in the Chronicles of Riddick series, and it was this film that first introduced the world to Diesel's husky charisma, with Riddick being one of the actor's favorite roles. Richard B. Riddick, a dangerous criminal, is being transported to prison in a spacecraft in the movie. Riddick manages to flee the spaceship after it is damaged by comet debris and crashes into an empty desert planet. When predatory alien creatures attack the survivors, Riddick teams up with the surviving crew and other passengers to devise a plan to get off the planet. Are you sure you can keep up? <laughs> Following the events of Pitch Black, an anime reveals what happened to Vin Diesel's Riddick and the other survivors. Before Vin Diesel, a relatively unknown actor, was cast in Pitch Black, Steven Seagal and other major action stars were considered. The film is set on a desolate planet where survivors of a spaceship crash discover that man-eating creatures live underground and only emerge at night. The problem is that a total eclipse of the planet is approaching and Diesel's ruthless convict Riddick is their only chance. Vin Diesel has reprised the role in two sequels, with a fourth in the works, as well as other spin-offs like the critically acclaimed Escape from Butcher Bay video game. Riddick is the polar opposite of Dom from The Fast and the Furious. While Dom is all about family and doing the right thing, Riddick is all about survival and, with a few exceptions, looking out for number one. Now that we know that this short movie picks up from the end of Pitch Black, let's drive straight into the movie. The Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury. The movie opens with quite a beautiful and scenic shot of the space as Riddick, Jack, and Imam make their way through the galaxy. The movie introduces the character of Toombs, a bounty hunter voiced by Nick Chinland, who also appears in The Chronicles of Riddick as the character in person. The short film's goal, as we have already discussed, was to bridge the five-year gap between Pitch Black 2000 and The Chronicles of Riddick 2001, and the storyline helps us understand what happened in the meanwhile. Trouble strikes the scenic space travel when they are discovered by a mercenary ship called Kublai Khan. Shortly after escaping M6 Dash 117, Riddick tries to hide his true identity from the mercenaries by posing as William J. Johns on the intercom, but his voice ID'd as Riddick, and the ship picks them up. Riddick has been aboard several mercenary ships, including the Kublai Khan. Riddick and Johns awaken from suspended animation in the 2009 video game The Chronicles of Riddick Dark Athena. 
a prequel to Pitch Black, only to find themselves aboard the massive mercenary vessel Dark Athena, commanded by Gael Ravis. Kublai Khan is also named after the founder of the Chinese Yuan Dynasty. Riddick is subdued after a brief but bloody battle when Jack is apprehended and held at gunpoint. The three survivors learn that their captors have strange plans for them. Antonia Chillingsworth, the ship's owner, is a criminal collector who freezes and keeps criminals as statues, which she considers art. The criminals are still alive and conscious despite being frozen. Riddick is going to be the ultimate masterpiece in her collection, according to her. She does, however, want to watch Riddick kill before she freezes him. Riddick, Jack, and Imam must fight their way through her army of human and alien creatures or face a fate worse than death. Before escaping with Jack and Imam, he is forced to fight a pair of Shrill, a strange alien species with four sharp tentacle-like limbs. They are a fast and deadly species. They can inject the poison into their victims that causes them to melt and turn into a goo-like substance. Shrimp also appear to be bioluminescent, emitting a rainbow of vibrant colors. A Shrill's body resembles a gyro in the middle, with the creature's brain presumably at its center. He sustains several wounds in the fight with them, and then Tombs and his mercenaries slash bounty hunters pursue Riddick for the majority of the story. Mercenaries are kept in a state of suspended animation until they are required. They are freed to confront Riddick and the rest of the crew on board the ship. It'll have to be an abstract piece. Down, down. <laughs> A group of mercs, including Alexander Toombs and the Brax, a strange biomechanical horror that follows the smell of his blood, pursue them as they flee. Riddick fights and kills Chillingsworth right-hand man, Junner, in the docking bay. Interestingly, Junner was inspired by Neo, the main character in the Matrix trilogy. Riddick is shot as they board a ship by Chillingsworth, who had apparently been kept secretly on board. However, Jack shoots Riddick before Chillingsworth can kill her. Imam and Riddick are both disturbed by Jack's proclivity for murder. Jack's character growth is significant as she discovers her violent side by shooting the ship's owner just as she is about to kill Riddick. As the three escape from the mercenary ship, this discovery is clearly a source of concern for Riddick and Imam. Riddick decides to leave her and Imam in New Mecca while he sets out on his own, fearful that Jack will continue to become more brutal in her attempts to emulate him. The short film thus shows Tombs meeting Riddick for the first time, as well as how Riddick, Imam, and Jack split up and go their separate ways. A week after The Chronicles of Riddick, this film was released, 2004, and in Riddick, the complete collection is included on the Blu-ray release of Pitch Black 2000. It is definitely a collector's item for those who are fans of the series. The image is a 1.85 to 1 letterbox transfer which means the subtitles are obscured when viewed on a 16 to 9 screen. Aside from that, the transfer is satisfactory, the colors are vibrant, and the image is well-defined. Peter Chung, who also directed the Aeon Flux series, has a distinct style that is evident in this film. Although I believe some of the character designs could have been more refined, the 2D animation is satisfactory. The problem is, that the 2D animation is completely overshadowed by the 3D animation. Riddick's spaceships, some of the interiors, and a couple of the aliens he must face are all beautifully designed and incredibly effective. There, however, sometimes appears to be a jarring discontinuity in styles where 2D and 3D animation meet, but it is still watchable. This half-hour animation earned a DD 5.1 English track, which was surprising. However, it's a welcome choice as the action and spaceship setting both deserve some sound effects. However, the action is primarily focused in the front, with the backs being used primarily for atmosphere. The dialogue is crystal clear throughout. You won't need the obscured subtitles and Vin Diesel sounds as young and fresh as a daisy. Find out. Hold your breath. There are some definite issues with this movie that are quite evident. Firstly, the movie is only of half an hour long, which poses difficulties which range from the movie being too fast-paced with a lot of action and not enough moments to breathe in between, and also, because of the time crunch, there is not enough attention given to the variety of interesting characters we see on screen, and thus, the character development suffers. Also, it is important to note that The Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury, isn't exactly a Disney product, and it's aimed at a slightly older demographic. The style isn't too dissimilar to anime, but the story and characters are definitely much more mature. Dark Fury is a nice collection of ideas with some spectacular and some mediocre visuals. However, the concept does not come together as a whole. It's an imaginative and creative marketing exercise, but I believe it will only appeal to diehard fans of the Riddick character. It's possible that casual viewers will be left a little cold, but all of the action almost makes up for the shortcoming, making it quite entertaining. Cop a CD if you're a fan, we definitely believe that it is worth a watch. Is there going to be Riddick 4? The story 
of The Chronicles of Riddick began in the year 2000, when the sci-fi horror film Pitch Black was released in theaters. The plot revolves around a group of characters whose transport ship crashes on an abandoned desert planet populated by bloodthirsty alien monsters who are sensitive to light. Diesel's performance stole the show to the point where Riddick became a cult anti-hero among movie fans. The Chronicles of Riddick and Riddick, two Pitch Black sequels, an animated film, The Chronicles of Riddick Dark Fury, and several video games were all inspired by the character. What we do know for sure, people, is that there definitely will be a sequel because Diesel loves Riddick just as much as the fans adore it. While not much is known about the sequel, it has been revealed that it will be titled Riddick for Furia, and that the plot will delve into the mysterious origins of the highly skilled Furian fugitive, according to Diesel himself. Diesel stated earlier this year that the script for Riddick 4, Furia, was complete, and that franchise director David Tui will return alongside Diesel in the lead, indicating that the action star is clearly eager to make Riddick 4, Furia, happen no matter how long it takes. Riddick. Riddick 4 Furia has been in the works for at least six years, believe it or not. Diesel and David Toohey, the original writer and director of Pitch Black and the Riddick spin-off franchise, announced their plans to make a new Riddick film in 2015. They also announced at the same time that a companion television series, Mark City, would be produced. According to reports, the film will be rated R, which is entirely appropriate given Riddick's murderous badassery, and the series will reportedly be mature rated as well. Diesel gave an update on the latest installment in the Riddick series. He announced it on Instagram, posting a shirtless photo of himself from Riddick with the caption, Fury may be closer than we think. Hashtag Riddick. His Instagram post has over 1.4 million likes as of this video, and later posts have also shown the star sharing his images and hyping up the upcoming movie. We'll have to wait and see which direction Riddick 4 Furia takes, but in the meantime, we can look forward to Vin Diesel reprising his role as Dominic Toretto and bringing the Fast and Furious franchise to a close with two final sequels, the first of which is set to hit theaters on April 7th, 2023. Rewatch the Riddick movies before the new ones come out so you're all caught up. The series is acclaimed and is considered a cult classic. So if you guys are looking for something to watch, look no further. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.